Well, you guys kept asking for it, so here it is. Your Garmore deck profile. Happy now? Alright, let's just get started. So our starter is going to be Matt Early Dawn Coel, because the other starter that came in set 13 for Liberators was garbage. Simple as that. Great threes. You're running four copies of Flash Fang Liberator Garmore XL. So Garmore XL's skill is when Eugene strides with Liberator or Garmore in its name, more restrictions I don't like, uh, you can pay the cost, kind plus one. If you do, look at top three cards and call up to two Liberators to separate rear, put the rest on the bottom. Uh, I don't like that skill just because A, the restriction is in G unit skill, is in G unit name, and the restrictions in name of Liberator. So it would have been cool if you can go into any G unit and just call out two Liberators. That would have been pretty dope. Or if you could just go into a Liberator unit and just call out any two cards. Either one would have been cool, bushy, but, or, you know, maybe better Liberator G units or better, you know, Liberator targets. Uh, GB1 skill is pretty decent, though. It's Vanguard. At the end of your turn, put two Liberator rear guards to the bottom of your deck, and you draw one. This card has been errated. It says top or bottom. It's not. It's just bottom. So you put two cards at the bottom of your deck, and you draw a card. For the other great threes, um, I don't know if you might have seen me run Percival before, but for this build, I'm just running Garmore. So this is not the uh, solitaire build. This is just kind of like the consistent, casual, like we're just playing the deck kind of build. So we're running the old Garmore, the uh, Liber Limit Break Garmore. Uh, I'm using the new art because I'm a scrub and I don't have SPs. Um, this art's pretty cool though. Uh, we're using this for just the name only, the Garmore name, just for the Garmore G unit. The skill, I mean, if you want to use it, it's Limit Break. Uh, canvas three liberators, look at the top card, call it to an open circle, and if you have another open circle, you just keep repeat repeating the skill until you fill your field. And then when this attacks, choose a liberator rear guard, put in the bottom of your deck, this gets 4k. Um, yeah, you're probably not going to be using any of that, but uh, if you have to ride this, like, you know, it's not that terrible. I mean, that's what we used to ride before for the old Garmore build, so why not? Not bad. So, even though this is not the solitaire build, we are still running good cards. Like four copies of uh, Tacturn Liberator Brennius. Brennius' skill is every time you call a unit from your deck, if you have Liberator Vanguard, this gets 2k and auto when this hits, uh, you unflip a damage. So every time you call a unit, it gets the unflip. So if you call five units, you can on hit unflip five. Um, yeah, still run four. Uh, that's basically your only unflip engine as well in this deck, and you're going to be counter blasting a lot. So if that card doesn't hit, um, good luck. Uh, four copies of Aglavel. Aglavel is your early game on place. Count plus one. Look at top three. Uh, if you have a Vanguard Liberator's name, first of all, uh, you look at the top three cards, search one with Liberator, call it, put the rest on the bottom. So this helps with early game, filling up your field, rushing in. Uh, really, really good card from the get-go. Uh, definitely run three of in any Liberator deck you, really, you play. Um... Three copies of Liberator Stiletto Hawk. So I was debating on this card at first if I want to run it. A, I want to make my deck kind of more high beast variant just to like take advantage of the one high beast skill, which is just the G unit Garmor skill, but sure. Um, the skill is actually what I really wanted to focus on is the fact that since I'm filling up the field so fast, being able to put this behind Van if I have to and give it the minus 2k to be a 7k booster. Uh, that's its skill. It's GB1 when it's placed. You can reduce its power by 2k and give it boost. I figured why not, and since I'm running a lot of, since I'm running 12 great twos anyways in the deck, and I'm going to be finding a lot of cards uh, and calling them out, this might be a good card to run into every now and then. And one copy of a Jargle because this card is terrible. Uh, a Jargle is GB1, bad. Count Boss 1 and Soul Boss 1, bad. Uh, when this place, when this is placed on rear from the deck, due to an effect with the Liberator card in its original name, bad. So this card, this card already has like a lot of restrictions just for the cost, and the payoff isn't even that good. It's uh, look at the top three, choose two with Liberator and call them, and put the rest on the bottom. So while that does sound pretty nice in theory, by the time you call this out, your field is pretty much full anyways. The only reason you're going to be really using this is if you want to continue chaining off calls and get Brynius and Bruno. Yes, I run Bruno in this deck. Bigger. 
Um, yeah, but I don't see myself running it more often. And also the Soul Blast cost is pretty hefty, being that we don't have a Soul Charge engine in this deck with Zoran. And uh, Garmor uses the Soul. So, yeah, pretty much don't want to don't wanna waste that. For Grade 1s, I'm running 4 copy of the Horse Liberator uh, board and Illusion. So I like End Illusion just because it just gains a, a 7k power for no reason, which is a really weird, arbitrary number that Bushy just decided to give it. So it's GB1 when another unit is placed on rear, so not from deck, just anywhere. Uh, if you have Vanguard Liberator, it gets 7k, so 14k vanilla beat stick booster. Why not? So you can put this behind Brennius, Swing, you put this behind your Vanguard to make a 14k booster. Um, yeah, it's a pretty pretty decent card. And if if you just so happen like you you like you have Stiletto and you gave it the minus 2k and you do this, well that's still a that's still like a 21k column you got there if you're attacking with this and boosting with this, you know. Why not? So it's not terrible. It makes decent boosts and makes up for field power. So more field power. I'm still running three copies of Bruno just because I like to be able to stack this power up and get this number really insanely high if I can for like a Helios turn. Um, if I'm playing against decks like Kagero and Dominate, Bruno is just not going to do much. Also, for people target this card over this card just because they think this card is going to be doing more than this when more often than not this is usually going to have the higher power early. And this is only going to have the higher power if I'm chaining, 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 which is probably not going to happen. Um, another thing I'd probably want to do in the future is just trade these all three of these off for Zoran, just because Zoran thins out the deck for triggers, gives more, gives me more soul to work with, and chains more calls off. So currently it's Bruno. Future might be Zoran. So keep an eye out for that. So for Stride Fodder, we're still running Gorbiduck just because um, the new one they gave us, whatever it's called, Bo I forgot the name, the card's bad. It's the Liberator card where you, to pay cost or stride, you put on the bottom of your deck and uh, you can choose to counterblast one Liberator for the cost of paying stride. Uh, this deck counterblasts a lot. And the fact that we have a counterblast, that the skill is to sack it, counterblast one stride, I don't know why there had to be a counterblast cost. That's just, it just really bugged me. And then the other skill isn't even something good, like search for an ideal Liberator Grade 3, which would probably be broken in Bluish Flame. Not even. It would just be nice to have a search. Anyways, back on track. The regular skill is hand or rear guard circle. You bind it face up, give a unit 2k, and unlock it. Or unlock it, then give it 2k. So yes, it helps you unlock, but... Again, you would have to literally discard it from your hand to unlock or rear and unlock it, and it's probably going to get locked anyway just because it is a stride fodder. So if if I'm going to draw into this, and it's not going to do anything in my hand but unlock cards, I'd rather just have this in my hand to pay cost for stride. And I'm not worried about the whole liberator call liberator thing because I have so many other liberator targets to work with that I don't worry about calling this out. And also because we're running Catch Goal, Catch Goal doesn't have a Liberator requirement, uh, Gorbiduck works fine too. And we already have an answer for Link Joker being Improved Falcon. Um, so while we're not running Milton Act Dragon in this deck, uh, Improved Falcon still can do decent if I want to unlock just to make plays. You know, it's still a good card in both Gurgit and especially Garmer since it's a High Beast Liberator. You know, drop zone skill, if you have two copies. It's a ratted, if I haven't said that enough in another video. This card is a ratted. It's if you have two copies, uh, choose one, uh, with choose another card with the same name, bind it face up for the skill. So, you know, keep your eye out for a ratted on this card. It's been a ratted twice. All right, on to the triggers. So, it is a high beast fo focused deck. Sorry, I'm running four copies of Scarface Lion. Uh, the reason I'm running Scarface Lion is because I'm running Gurgit G units, and uh, being able to call these from hand and fill in the soul works too to help with that. Um, for a copy of uh, Plodmi Liberator, 
So it's eight crits. This is a Liberator High Beast, so that's why we run it. So Liberator Target, Liberator Costs, um, Liberator Reveal, High Beast, you know. You know how it goes. Four copies of Catch Goal for chaining. So, you know, High Beast, chaining, uh, stand triggers for potential Brennius stands and more swings to get more combos off. Really good card. Uh, definitely going to keep running this in uh, all my Liberator decks for chaining up and powering up columns. And lastly, Liberator High Beast Shaggy Rabbit. So it's if you pay cost for G, for a G Guardian, choose this unit and another heal, bind them face up, and you get to kind of charge your soul charge. Um, you might use the soul charge in this deck just because, uh, you know, there's not a lot of soul engine. You only have a Scarface Lion and a Coel as your soul charge, basically. So, um, yeah, you might use it. But definitely run this heal if you can. All right, on to the G units. We're running one copy of Solemn Glitter. So this is most likely going to be your first try. So you go into this. Uh, if you're on the uh, Wolfgang, 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 Garmore, you can still go into this, counter plus one, look at top three, call two Liberators, uh, put the rest on the bottom of your deck. So this is pretty nice. Calls out two cards for one counter blast. Um, doesn't give him power, doesn't do anything else. You would have to have Brennius and Bruno if you wanted to stack powers and do some cool stuff. Um, the goal of your deck is basically just a superior call as much as possible until there basically is just triggers in your deck and you're just triggering, triggering, triggering. So this is going to be your first try. Uh, if you're at GB2, this is going to be your most likely your second try. It's going to be Golden Knight of Gleaming Fang, Garmore. So this was the card that was, you know, doing the whole Garmore loop. Not really a loop, but just chain strategy. We made Brainius like a giant column and swung. The reason I'm not doing this in this build is just because we have so many decks that kind of just shut down those plays that are in the meta right now, such as Dominate, ZTB, Overlord. Um, Luard is even retiring stuff. Sharhot retires things. It's just we're in, a, we're in a format where a lot of decks are retiring units. So I don't want to play a deck. Not that I'm going to play this in a tournament, but if I'm going to play this deck against friends who are playing these decks, uh, I'm going to play it with the most optimal way I can against, you know, these plays. So the skill of this Garmore is GB2. Um, choose a card from your drop zone, put it in the bottom of your deck, reveal the top four, uh, and for each high beast you reveal, you pick a unit, um, you pick a different unit, and then you give it 4k. So you reveal four high beasts, 4k to four different units, and if you reveal four or more high beasts from your top six, uh, this unit gains a crit. So mid-game, Gains crits, possibly. Uh, the other skill is Catalyst 1, Soul Blast 1. Uh, if you have a heart with Garmore, look at the top three, call the unit, shuffle your deck. So this isn't a Liberator restriction, which is really, really, really nice. Um, helps you chain off. The whole point of the other deck was that you use this skill five times because it's not once per turn, it's just act. You use all your Cannon Blast, all your Soul Blasts. Use Zoran to fill the soul back up. You use Rune Bow to fill the soul. And then you swing a Brainius, and it would swing for like 56 or 70k, and they'd have to let it hit one way or another, and then you get all your counter blasts back and do it all over again. It was really fun. It would be like 20 minutes, 20 minute turns, basically, uh, just to make your opponent really upset. Um, I'm not making that the focus of this deck. I might later, just to have fun with it. Um, but for now, this is like my consistent Garmore deck. This is also Royal Paladin, just throwing that out there. So you can make this in a Royal Paladin Garmore deck too. So this is still going to most likely be the win condition for your game. It's going to be four copies of Gurgit Helios. So while it is going to be kind of hard to fill the field since the only thing that will help fill the field will be Aglavale and Coel, um, this is probably going to be your win con just because... You're running eight crits, and this card is a glory skill, meaning that your opponent can only guard with, cannot guard with grade one or higher units from their hand. So if you swing with this and you have a full field, that's 51. Uh, put end illusion behind that. That's what 65. You know, you give, you know, you add power somehow. You put Bruno behind this and stack it up. It gets really big as well. So focus point is to make your vanguard really big with this turn swing 
get a bunch of crits from all the deck thinning and superior calling you did throughout the turn in the game and hopefully win that turn. And we run eight copies, so you can do it twice. Um, after that, being that if you somehow used all your Gurga Helioses or used two of them, you still didn't win. You still have the option for Heavenly Law Gurga, two copies of it. Um, this is just for like late game situation where you have like two or four copies of Gurga Helios face up. You go into this, you feel it gets plus six to 10k, and you start swinging and getting these. Uh, power ups and you know spear calls multi-attacking really nice card um don't need it at four just because you know we need to make room for all the liberator garbage um running one copy of celtus winner just for fun uh it, it's honestly just for fun this card would be a lot better if you run it with horses in the deck just because it makes really funny plays that way um i still like to have this card just because you know just Swing and call something afterwards, GBA. If your opponent's at 5 damage and you have the GBA, why not? It's an option. Um, alternate, I guess you could have Scourge Point or Radiant Sword or... You know, you can figure it out. This G-Zone's pretty... It's honestly not very restrictive. You can mess around with as much as you want. Uh, Ultima, just because I have the card. Um, Karen Blast's ultimate stride cost, you know, if you don't win with this turn, you basically lose the game. Uh, on place, Karen Blast 2, search for two cards, put the other two cards on the top of your deck. We do run stand triggers in this deck, so you can go, if your opponent's at 5 damage, go swing, 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 triggers, stand triggers, stand the whole field, crit, give everything a crit, swing all over again, so... The only thing with, if you go into Ultima, you can't do a bunch of spirit call chains, because it'll mess up your, your stack from the skill. But, you know what? We run one copy, because I have it. On to the G-Guardians. One copy of Dismal. Just uh, just basically kind of saying, like, you don't want your opponent to touch your um, Brainius. That's basically the most important cost of this. It's Other than that, it can uh, also be Flip Fodder if you want. So one copy of that. We're doing three copies of Slamy Flare. Uh, the reason we're doing three copies of Slamy Flare is because having Field is not as important as it is in Gurgit, because you just replenish it immediately so if you feel it's empty the better when you start your turn just because when you pay those costs to fill your field it doesn't feel like you're wasting anything by calling over units and your field gets full like that so using slimy flare you can use your field and your rear guard units as cost to get more shield to deck thin pull those triggers not if you don't want to deck thin for triggers just pull the triggers out for shield that works too uh i just want to run more slimy flares just so i can have more options and uh more shield. And then the one Elise. Elise is not a help, as helpful in this deck as it is in Gurgit, but it is just there if I want to get to GB8 or want to get to GB3 for Ultima turn, uh, we have this as an option. So just the one Elise for now. Um, don't go into this often, so the main shields are going to be Slamy Flare. That's why I run three copies of it. Uh, that was basically the deck. Um, this deck is honestly okay. It's not the best deck I've ever played. It's honestly just not a good Gold Paladin deck in my opinion. There's just a lot of things that this deck could have done better or that Bushy could have done to make this a better deck. Maybe making more Garmore um, required Vanguard cards. That would have been cool. You know, if everything's just Liberator focused, it just kind of seems kind of stale. Like, you're just filling a field and that's the end result. So... Let me know what you guys think. If you guys want to see like a solitaire build in the future, let me know. That may or may not happen, depending how I feel about the deck. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Stay tuned for more content in the future. Stay tuned for more standard and premium content when that comes out. So yeah, we'll be doing that in the future. So this was Richard, and that's it. See y'all later.